yes. as well as artisans will not otherwise i'm saying that we can just add as well as artisans no that's the correction has been done already oh. page 11 page 11 that is the last page yeah? okay. Wait, what's happening today page page 11 any correction page 11 let's go to page 12 sorry um page 11 um Second line from the bottom. Is there any reason why review is in cap? What? The council present a review. The review. Is there any reason why it's in capital? Yeah. Review. There's no reason. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go to page 12. These are figures. I hope there are no corrections there. Page 13. <laughs> Why the double table? Pardon? Why the double table? Uh, same table twice. Ah. Page 12, you mean the proposal for annual subscription, then proposal for annual subscription. Are they the same, uh, ED? Is it the same? Uh, it's been repeated. So we, Mr. Chairman, the yes, thing, I think yes. the second column, the first should be professional technologists instead of professional engineers. Okay. Have you corrected it? Yeah, the fees are the same. Yes. Uh, actually, it's a continuation. It's a continuation. <laughs> so, which is the correct situation? Mr. Chairman, I think that we should just cross one table. So, the second table should be crossed and the numbering uh, changed. Yeah. That's all. The second table should be crossed out, and, and then the subsequent numbering, numbering will, yeah, will be corrected. Should be reorganized. Any other correction? No, we 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 talked about getting rid of the second table. It doesn't really matter which we get rid of one uh, renumber. Or yeah. <laughs> Page 13. Page 14. Mm -hmm. It seems that it's part of location. Uh, location. I am page 14. Page the, 14. Yeah, the top, the first point. Very Various concerns. concerns. Yeah. Is it not part of something, a sentence of, coming from somewhere? They cannot stand on this one. Various concerns Matthew, raised. Is it part of the re review process, maybe? Because there is yeah. a semi Yeah. Uh, Tables and it shifts the paradigm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
or in relation to the fees that were supposed to be paid. But those were questions that people raised. If you say other, it means some well, concerns raised by us. Concerns raised by us. Thank you. So, con cancel the barriers. Concern raised were as follows. Okay, let's go to page 15. Yeah. Eight point zero, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Give, yeah. Affairs, yeah. To steer the affairs, yeah. Okay. Mm. So the the first correction, page eight. One meeting, please. The f uh, page fifteen. Please, I'm um, make an announcement. Page fifteen, paragraph eight, handing over the. Sentence you read the incoming president, engineer Steve Amoni Yangson, in his acceptance speech, expressed his gratitude, and so on. So that's how it should read. Yeah, any other correction? The, the page 13, please. Pardon? Page 13. If you taking us back. Yeah, if I'm allowed to. Yes. Then number 27, the current number 27, honor fellow. Where, where is the guy? Are you in the overflow? No, I'm here, please. <laughs> Just be know the uh, number 27. 27, yeah. yeah. Is that special? Why is that in uh, bold and then also there's no money attached to it? They, they don't pay. They it's don't special. pay. Yeah. Is that why it is in bold? As well? Yeah. Ah, okay. To honor them. Okay. <laughs> Wait, okay, that's, yes, page three, okay. The, the yeah. correction was made in the order of business. The Are you the talking about page three? Yeah, no, I'm, yeah, page three. Section B. Yes, yeah, section B, minutes of 50th. Annual general meeting. No, the correction was made on the order of the business. That was page two. It's been, it's been corrected. Okay. Mr. Chairman, um, I think uh, for the honorary fellow, it might be um, a good idea to remove the bold and put an asterisk and indicate that they don't pay. The, uh -huh. Because otherwise, one day, somebody will come and think that it's an omission. So it may be that we need to show why this is blank. Otherwise, we should put uh, something in the box. So if we put an asterisk and indicate that I mean, they are exempted from paying, also for tax purposes. Overflow. Yeah. 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 Overflow. Overflow, yes. We yes. are. Um, page 15. 15, yes. Yes, uh, where we have the incoming uh, president engineer, Steve. Uh, I'm winning. If you read. Yes, um, it's been corrected. You can see I, uh, 2018 backslash, 2019 backslash. So I think once we go, the last one, there shouldn't be any. No, it's 2018 2019 council year. No, but there's a backslash before the council year. Oh, the second slash. Oh, okay. Yes. And then also um, <coughs> to steer the affairs, but you have made it a fair. I don't know whether you. It's all been corrected. Okay, that one has been corrected. All right. Thank you. Okay. Page 
we are, it says the meeting came to an end at 4.45 p.m. We didn't, we ended um, before lunch. <laughs> lunch, well, we had lunch around 1.30 and we closed before lunch. The AGM ended before lunch. I don't know the time it ended, mm. but we had lunch around 2 o'clock. The okay. AGM did not drag so, on so, to quarter to 5. So, so, so maybe 12.45. 1.45, maybe 1.45. But it cannot be 4.45. Yeah. 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 That's true. If you don't remember, how do you make it? It would have been recorded. No, no, but it wasn't for... Okay, it will be corrected. It will be corrected. Yes. Uh, the table. Rich. Where is the commencement time? <laughs> the heading on page four. Fourteen. The opening. 10.05. Yeah, the heading is saying at 4. Oh, 4. Ten. Yeah. Oh. Where is the 14 Where is the 14 hours? This explains why I think. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President. Yes. Uh, page 13. On the retired craftsman, the fee, there's nothing there. Retired craftsman. Yeah, that's uh, 33. Yeah, decision, I don't think a decision was taken. If, if a decision was not taken, then just put uh, an asterisk just as uh, the other one to explain. It's the same as 75. Mr. Chairman. Let's finish the correction. Then we adopt. And uh, for, for yeah. your information, any you time here, you mention a number, mm -hmm. it is not 15 or less. It's 15 yes. or fewer. That's uh, Achimota English. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. President. Uh, uh, Edie, have you done that correction from Dr. Boyce? Mr. Yes. President, I would like to take you as back again to page 8, minutes of the 49th AGMC. The confirmation of minutes, you would realize that we made some corrections, and I was expecting that these corrections would have reflected in these minutes. He just said, subject to the following corrections. They were not... Item, which, which item? Item 4.0. 4.1, 4. 4. 4. 4. sorry. Yes. On the, on the no. motion by engineer Dr. Adams. No, before that, there were corrections, just like we are having corrections now. Those corrections mm. should, re should reflect. So I don't think we are going to publish this again. Yeah. So at least all the corrections which were made should be shown here. It's not part, so we can't do any business on it, can we? Hmm? It should have been. So for the future, it will be corrected. But now we don't have the material to work on it. Well, I'm sure if we went back to the scripts, we probably will find them. Mm. Okay. Wow. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Just to support what he's saying, if you look at page 14, mm -hmm. uh, from the, the first, from the top, mm -hmm. I mean the paragraph. Before, on a motion. Just above 7. Is it on a motion? The paragraph just above 7.0. Yes. yes, on a motion. It's written by there, Engineer Magnus has still then moved for the acceptance of the proposed annual dues. 
for 2019 to be reviewed by council subject to various corrections and was seconded by Engineer Tripolis Neokai. Yes. Sorry. Uh, what's I'm your comment? I'm quoting the wrong place. There was one here. <laughs> Acceptance of the management report, page 10. Page 10. Engineer Dr. Robert Ajay moved for the acceptance of the management report and was seconded by Engineer Theophilus Neokai on condition that the report be corrected as pointed out at the AGM and posted on the website. This doesn't seem to have been done. Yeah. No, it's not the remnant. These are corrections of minutes. Which you said you do, you've ignored them in the previous one. Mm -hmm. We are correcting some now. Yeah. So if you don't take this note so that when they are uh, correct, yeah, this should be noted for. Things it's should been be noted. Put here, your comment but is noted for. But not to say that for. it should be put later on, and then it won't appear. Okay. Engineer. Order, this will come under matters arising. Right. Yeah. Let's continue. We've 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 come to the end. Engineer. Yeah. Engineer President. We've got the correction. Correction. It's been moved for acceptance. No, there's a correction. Okay. Please, page four, the heading. The venue, they said IGCS. It's supposed to be ISGC. ISGC. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. ISGC. Yes, I have one. So, um, I'm just noting that on page 12 and 13, when we did correction of the table, um, because we are going to do, um, we are cancelling one out and we're going to renumber, I thought we could use the opportunity to sort of change the numbering convention so that if, for example, at class, at the number one, which is the professional engineers, mm -hmm. we can have that as, say, A and have III or one and have III. The second one follows engineering technologies. It makes this the reading come when we're discussing the minutes. It makes it makes it's it not reading quite okay. It's been Thank corrected, you. so can you move on? No, because when you because when you go down to the other table, which has the fee for registration of local firms, that also that table sort of follows, but it has no numbers. So just to allow for consistency in our reporting, yes. if we could just have it's that. been corrected by the ED. Can you move in, on? in the absence of any further suggestions, oh, there's a hand at the back. <laughs> Please, can you get up so that we see you? Sitting down and we'll be, yeah. Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, please, I want to take us to page 15. Um, regional branches chairman in that table. I believe that um, Volta Region is represented by. Engineer Antonietta Ama, who is not a chairman but a chairperson. So, if we could have done the heading regional branches chairpersons. Um, <laughs> can, can, can you move? In the absence of any further corrections, additions, subtractions to the minutes, I move that the amended minutes be accepted as a true reflection of the meeting held at ISGC in March 2018. Moved and seconded by, second by Engineer Day. He was there. Seconded. Now, yes, um, we have an attendance register uh, in front there, and everybody make, must make sure his name is properly recorded in that attendance register so that next year we don't go through you know, this kind of problem. Yeah, and also when people are writing their name, they do not write cl clearly. So it has to be printed. The name has to be printed so that whoever is typing would know. Yeah, that's, I think we, we, we have enough. Uh, now, 
Now the next item is appointment of scrutineers for election of councillors 2018-2019. Um, IPP is the uh, head of the scrutineers, so you appoint uh, two other people. We nominate. According to the GHI bylaws, section 10, subsection 5, 3, subsection 5, the IPP is supposed to chair the scrutineers, and then we invite, I just wanted to quote the, the relevant subsection. That's my trouble. I've read it. <laughs> now, now we, need, we need two volunteers to accompany her uh, to, for the assignment. I see one hand up there. Can you please get up and indicate your name? So no, no, Chief Director, Ministry of... Engineer Samal Hassari. My, my name is Engineer Edmund Oferno. Okay. Engineer Oferno. 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 And then, and then the Did other one. Oh, she's volunteered. Okay. So I'll take all three. Okay. Yes, we'll be back very soon. All right. Engineer <laughs> Opo. <laughs> you have. We go on. We go on with the. Mat I think we do matters arising. Matters arising out of the minutes. Any 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 issue to be discussed? Hmm. Uh, was the president elect to give us the latest on the land issue? I think that is the most uh, pertinent issue here. Uh, good morning, all. Um, the as as you are well aware, the initially we had a, a letter from the Ministry of Lands and the Ministry of Works and Housing. Um, which allocated the land adjacent to our present, uh, our present complex. And uh, unfortunately, the, um, just before we could complete the paperwork at the Ministry of Lands, uh, at the La Lands Commission, um, we saw that the development was taking place. Apparently, um, the land had been sold without the knowledge of the Ministry of Works and Housing to another company, and they had committed them. So um, at my last meeting with the Chief Director and the Minister for Works and Housing, um, they are trying to get us another plot of land, um, uh, either in the, hopefully in the Roman Ridge area. And so we'll follow up on that and make sure that um, this thing uh, we acquired that land. Um, Extension of the office. Yes. Now we'll talk about land. Why do you say for what? Any, any comments on that? Edi, are there some other issues you want to? President, I just wanted to add that we need that land because of the collaboration we've started with the Ministry of Environment, Science and Technology regarding the, te the precision manufacturing center that we want to put up to support us. Some people <laughs> remarked yesterday the training of especially mechanical engineers and uh, electrical engineers and our process engineers. And arising out of the pediatric declaration, there, there there is a, proce a process. We have a communique that we would talk to the press about and talk to the world about hopefully next week. And we will need a parcel of land. Uh, the institution is being supported by MasterCard USA Foundation. And the institution, MasterCard of Canada, I'm sorry. And the institution is the lead organization that is going to own and operate this. 
with a board of trustees. So we, we will need that piece of land just to explain. And also we, uh, we need to do some work on the WAFIO Secretariat, the West African Federation. The Ghana Institution is hosting the West African Federation and we need some space to create a secretariat, a properly functioning secretariat, which is also both Anglophone and Francophone. Thank you. Any other pertinent issue? Yes. Just said the, the land piece of land we need is quite should be a bit bigger than what we were thinking of earlier because if we want to put up training facilities and um, we we also want vertical expansion. yes sir but because right now I remember uh, the last council before we've been coming up with all these ideas had already in, uh, decided that we needed a place for training artisans all the training rules for the different groups that are joining. So already we wanted to build a bigger secretariat. So if we're going to bring all these other things in, then probably we should look at it and then see you know, okay. whether we need something bigger than what we're thinking of. That will be there. Yes, please. Are you going back to correct the minute? No. With regard to this issue about the issue of land, yes. it was stated that we look at the option of developing and expanding the engineer center. Has that option been no, that is going on. Uh, I think in the course of the documentaries we showed yesterday before the beginning, in fact, on the opening day, you would have seen some presentations that we've made to council, which council has approved for further development, that we want to refurbish our existing structure refurbish it because we recognize that has been said our next day neighbors are going to put up a, an ultra modern facility and we want to look the part and uh, and so therefore some 3d expressions were shown yesterday i don't know whether those of you who were here saw it so that is the first stage of course we have a bit of space behind us and a bit of space to the left and so therefore, going forward, maybe in the long term, this is a short term, medium to long term, we need to engage architects to look at the various schemes that council may then approve and then inform uh, AGM about it. Thank you. Any other comment? We'll now move to uh, the management report for the council year. 2018-2019. Can you please upload the management report? Yeah, you have to sit so that you can look. Can it be made bigger? This is going to be the management report of the 2018-2019 council year. I think that should be fine, yes. This was the picture we took at the last AGM. I'm sure you can identify yourself if, first, if your eyes are good. Of course, our management report follows our strategic areas the corporate governance structure of the GHIE, and the major features are education training. That is our main course to educate and train our membership, 
professional practice, membership welfare, and what we refer to as public advisory services. The council year began immediately after the Tayman meeting. And the theme was GHI at 50, introspection and the impact of engineering on Ghana's sustainable development. The Sennhausen, Samuel Atacha delivered the keynote address. Of course, the investiture of our 49th president, Engineer Steve Morning Youngson took place on the 23rd of March. And the Chief Justice was represented by Justice Anini who was in the new council. Other dignities who attended included our brothers from Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and Rwanda. The institution is governed through outstanding committees, technical divisions, regional branches, ad hoc committees, the past president's forum. That hasn't met too frequently of late, but they had one meeting last year, and we hope that this year they will be a bit more frequent with their meetings. This last year saw the appointment of a new executive director in the person of your humble servant, Engineer Kwabna Ajay Ejepong. As I said, Justice Eni Mboa swore in the new council, and the terms of reference were developed for finance committee, membership committee, education training, welfare, and the rest. As we saw yesterday, the council committed us to developing a new CPD manual and produced the implementation plan that culminated in the launching of the CPD manual yesterday. The review of our courses and seminars too are ongoing. We have received a lot of feedback from attendees to our seminars and workshops that we need to inject a lot more life and vibrancy into those workshops. But we'd like to enlist your support. You are the institution and you have to show interest in some of these things and we expect participation to increase. To be able to break even, we have to organize workshops. We need a participation of no less than 50. And sometimes we are having to grapple 30. And we are increasing our correspondence and our uh, communication with our members. And we expect the engineers to be upfront and very punctual. When I say punctual, we don't have to wait to the day of the seminar before appearing at the institution. It makes it difficult for logistical arrangements. So when we set a deadline, and sometimes we give some teasers and... Uh, <laughs> some motivation by giving you early bed registrations and all that. We expect that when we give you a time lag, that please register by the 10th of this month and take advantage of a lower registration fee. We expect a lot more of you to do so. We'll be communicating with the major engineering firms. I know some of you are challenged. You can't take the decisions on your own to attend. You need the permission of your bosses in the big engineering firms to attend. So we'll do better communicating with your bosses to let them understand the need for you to earn your CPDs, the need for you to um, attend these seminars. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we have also been reviewing some of the curricula of some tertiary institutions. It's part of the accreditation law. The institution has to always make an input into the tertiary institutions who are providing engineering education. And of course, I've mentioned this, we had a series of lectures, conferences, and professional practice is a very important part of what we do. The committee is headed by immediate past president and current president-elect of Federation of African Organizations, Engineer Kalian Bushadid. And we have said, why well, we want to support engineers to do the right thing? We would not protect or give cover for those who go errant. We don't want errant behavior from our members. And of course, we've had to, the council has had to sanction some three engineers uh, in the past year. Arrangements have been made with the German uh, NGIZ, the aid agency, to develop online ethics examinations um, every year so that it will give every member an opportunity to earn CPD credits by going online and taking an online ethics exam. 
And we are very well advanced in that, in discussions with them. And we hope that within the next couple of months, it should be possible to put that on our portal and allow our members to be able to take online exams. And of course, uh, the presidential address is the highlight of our, of our calendar year and any president's tenure. And this year, we <laughs> Engineer Harold always remembers us with this World Toilet Day. <laughs> it happened, we decided to put it on November 19, World Toilet Day, because uh, Mr. Youngson is also a sanitary engineer, and uh, myself also in sanitation, as well as Engineer Harold. So we have a bias there. That's why we chose November 19, instead of usual October, late October, that we normally have our presidential address. The theme of the address also had to do with engineering practice and associated institutional arrangements for effective service delivery in sanitation. So it captured what he had practiced for many years of his life. But of course, uh, this was the program statement that the president addressed. I'm sure you've all, you all listened to it. You all have copies of the document. There are still bound copies available if you want to keep copies. It's more than a PhD thesis. You can keep it for your library. And these were some of the uh, recommendations that our president made in his remarks. And uh, I'm sure all of you have read about it, that he moved for the establishment of a sanitation agency that should become the central coordinating authority for sanitation. I mean, we are all saddled with the fact that the governance arrangements for sanitation in this country is a bit problematic. There is a chaotic assembly of agencies that are running sanitation in our country, and it gives um, grounds for confusion. These are also some of the recommendations of the president. Of course, our evening lectures is one of the mainstays of this institution, and we want to improve and increase it. And we want to have, especially some of our past presidents, have evening sessions with us as part of the mentorship of our younger engineers. For engineers to realize that it's great to be an engineer, to be proud to be engineers. So that when we have invitations and days of invitations for some of our experienced engineers, I do believe that most of you will be present. We don't want to set up a function for an evening session for one of our retired engineers to share their experiences with us, and then the room, our room seats 200. And it's not pleasing to video coverage when it is about a third full. It, it becomes very challenging. And we do hope that this year, when you are called on, you will do so. Of course, quite a number of uh, uh, conferences were held in the last year, financing private road management, nuclear applications in industry. I'm sure you listen to a lot of the clear presentations that were made. And the GHI has been very supportive of adding nuclear to our energy mix. And we are proud and happy that uh, one of us, our, pres our vice president, is now the executive director of the Nuclear Power Ghana. So it means that we are well anchored. And it is our duty to really calm the concerns of Ghanaians. When Ghanaians hear nuclear, all they think about is Fukushima and Chernobyl. <laughs> and they wonder whether it's possible. But this is a well-crafted program that is going according to international specifications. And I do believe that if we want to transform our economy and we need the security of energy supply, then we need nuclear in our mix. And we hope that in the next 15 years or so, at least in the lifetime of Dr. Boachie and Dr. Robert J, we'll be able to see a nuclear reactor. <laughs> of course, we had presentation from the Public Procurement Authority um, we also had presentations on geotechnical engineering, designs and construction, the use of new software with uh, geoscience from Canada. We had Professor Bob Ando give us a very lovely disposition on addressing our perennial flooding challenges in, in Ghana. We were a bit disappointed that we invited all the district assemblies. And they are the ones who need this. When you see Kumasi flooding, Accra flooding, we expect that the that our engagement with the district assemblies should improve. They are the ones who are at the front line of engineering uh, delivery of services. And unfortunately, as I said yesterday, 
the last audit with debt of engineering capacity, you'll be surprised to know that less than 18 out of the 257 have certified engineers who belong to this organization. And then we have to work to improve. But of course, Dr. Krushang's industrial centrifugal compressors conversation that we had, and those of us who were not mechanical engineers were not very happy that day. <laughs> of course, uh, um, we have to talk about the enforcement of the Engineering Council Act. And I think that is very, very important, especially in relation to the practice of engineering and large engineering organizations. We've started a process already of notification and compliance. And let it out already to the Minerals Commission, the Telecoms uh, Chamber of Commerce, and it will go to large entities like VRA, like GAPOHA, to ensure that especially the international contractors that you bring to work here, their engineers have to be certified by the GHIE. None of us can walk into Germany and start practicing. And so it is part of our job as members of this institution, if you happen to be in a managerial position, should be part of the terms of reference of the procurement process. That if indeed there are engineering practitioners who are going to be here to come and work, it's important that they show respect to the engineering profession in this country by being certified by the GHIE. And of course, um, we have been undergoing some sensitization workshops in the advancements of the engineering regulation uh, with support from BUSAC. We had several sensitization workshops around the country that culminating in the drafting of our engineering regulations. It's now at ministry level. Um, I think Tuesday, Tuesday, I believe, April 2nd, there will be a final workshop at the engineer center. That will be hosted by the Ministry of Housing to take a final look at the regulations that we have been able to put together. And of course, our lovely women. Where are you, wine? Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> have a newly branded wine. And those of us, the men who were part of the workshop, you missed, you the men. <laughs> enjoyed the workshop, it's ongoing. Okay. It's on Facebook. So I think you can still go and have a look at it. And you'll be branded to who you are, what colors you should be wearing, and that we have different body sizes. Some are, as they say, strawberry. Some are tomato. <laughs> Some are supposed to be the, the time capsule. You know, the guitar side. <laughs> we learned all that that day. <laughs> so um, Wine is really partnering with the Ministry of Gender to do so many things, outreach. And in fact, I was pleased to have had the opportunity to launch. So, so, sorry to launch the ECG wine chapter. I think the ECG did very well. They had over 80 participants. Let's give them a round of applause. It's the organization that has so many women there. And I was thrilled, you know. And when you have me amongst women, that can be problematic. <laughs> and of course, I joined a lot of them in Mombasa. Uh, I think about 12 of them. You were there, and you know. And we took a nice picture on the poolside after having some drinks. <laughs> of course, we we'll look at our international relations. Um, we've been very active on the international front. And I think it is useful and it's important. It's useful and it's important. Um, of course, as the headquarters of the West African Federations, we have conferences. Hello. Thanks. So we attended the Sierra Leonean Institution of Engineers Biennial Conference. Um, I think that's a little mistake. APWA is American Public Works Association. We also attended that in um, Cleveland, Denver, Denver, Colorado, I think. Yes. So the, the Rwanda one is different. Yes, that was attended by the president-elect. So that shouldn't have an APW, that's a mistake, we are sorry about that. Kansas City for the Public Works Expo, and the African Engineering Week, which was held in Mombasa, I referred to. Ghana is intending to hold the Engineering Week, 
the African Engineering Week. I think it's something that as the institution we can discuss. In Ghana, our Engineering Week happens in the last week of March. But the African Week happens in September. So we have to take a decision whether we want to align so that in future our Engineering Week will be the same as the African Engineering Week. We have to look, discuss that. It depends on what we want to do. But right now, Africa uh, or FAEO is in association with UNESCO to, to celebrate that week. And there are a list of protocols that you have to satisfy before you can be given the right to host. Um, we were free to do it this year, but we thought we were not prepared. So Zambia was given the opportunity to host 2019. And we believe that hopefully by 2021, when our own Kalian Bush did will be the president of the FAU. We should have the opportunity to host that here. I think that should deserve more applause. And so we have started the process of putting the operations together to be able to satisfy all the protocols to be able to host that. But of course, as usual, we renewed our MOU with the ASC, the American Society of Civil Engineers, um, and then also the mechanical chair attending the American Society of Mechanical Engineering Convention as well. So they also have an MOU. I think what is important is how we activate these MOUs. We've had them for some time. And how we activate the MOUs, even as part of the CPDs, the webinars that they do, how we make it possible for our members to also have those international webinars. I know currently ongoing, the Canadians have put together a webinar on sustainable engineering that some of us can take advantage of. And I think in due course, when we improve our IT platform at the head office, we'll make it possible for people to have the opportunity to do these things. And I think we also want to encourage our members to attend these conferences. At least the institution will support your registration. We will support your registration. You may have to buy your own ticket unless you are the ED. <laughs> You know, but we will support you. I want to encourage a lot more Ghanaians. You know, when you go to functions and you have some of your colleagues there, it's better. And this year we are, we are going to the World Convention in far away down under Melbourne. So I encourage a lot of you to get in touch with the Secretariat if you are interested so that we can help you with the registration process. But just know that the ticket is a bit steep and you are going to Melbourne in Australia. And uh, we joined our colleagues in Mauritius in their 70th anniversary, the 60th anniversary of Nigeria, and as I said, um, the ASME, the mechanical chair went, and also the, the chair of uh, membership um, also attended the TRB conference this January to interact with some of our Ghanaian counterparts uh, because we want to build a diaspora branch of the GHI, and he's in the process of activating that. Membership, I think this year we've been able to at least um, enlist more than 610, I believe, at the last count in this past council year. So that's an improvement on previous years. And of course, they've, we've had clear guidelines for online engineering professional examination, and that has been going on quite smoothly. We want to recruit and train more panelists um, to assist in the professional examinations. And also, uh, we've put together an ethics protocol for our panelists because of some issues that came up. We want our panelists to be above board. And as we say, to pass the smell test. But this is how the EP has developed from, two to, from 2005 to 2019. So there's been an increase in people taking the professional exams. And it's been significant. Uh, these are the applications, these are the passes. The pass rate is reasonably high, and that is to be expected for engineers. You are the top of the intelligentsia in the country. And uh, I think the failure rate is quite low, and we hope that we can be able to turn out close to 100% every year. Um, members of good standing, that is the big issue. That is my issue. Because when I look at our financial profile, the biggest quantum of debt is to our individual members. And sometimes it's difficult to locate where they are. Some have 
disappear from the screen when they leave work. They don't update where they are. And we are, want to encourage you. We are improving the IT infrastructure that we have at the party. Ah, sorry. At the... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say party headquarters. <laughs> this is the GHI headquarters I referred. <laughs> um, we have registered over 10,000 members. Well, of course, a few have passed on. <laughs> Well, they say you can take a man out of politics, but you can't take the politics out of the man. <laughs> I'm quoting Dr. Boachi. <laughs> um, we have only, as of 2017-18, we had only 36% of good standing. And that is really low. And our, our dues are, I don't want to even call it dues anymore. So these days, when you look at the letters we send to you, we say it is the renewal of your certification to practice. It is not dues. We are not just some old boys association that you can decide to pay dues or not. If you are not certified to practice, it's illegal to practice. And I made it clear in the closing remarks on the opening day. The law is clear. The new, our new constitution is also clear. Every 31st of every year, your certification expires. So we want to encourage you to even renew. This year we'll put in an early bird motivation. So if you can renew by October or November, you have a discount. And we'll give you only up to the end of February. If by February you haven't renewed, um, the council is at liberty to take your name off the list. And by so doing, you are not allowed to use your stamp to stamp your documents. And you know what that means. We don't want to get to that point. So I think we know we are all gentlemen. The, the renewal fees are not too high. And ladies, you know, some of us, when we were in engineering school, there was no lady. So we are still challenged. Please forgive us wine. But it has improved slightly after a little bit of aggression from us. Uh, 18 and 19, I think it's improved to 43%, but it's still we should do more. If we can go to around 60-65%, then we will say that we are a strong institution. Of course, the distribution is also very loaded. It means that we have a big problem still in attracting our craftsmen, our technicians, our technologists. It's still predominantly engineers, both trainee and professional. And the training thing is very funny. There are some who have been training for 20 years. And I'm trying to encourage some of my colleagues who are still not professional engineers not to be scared of the exams. Um, for those who are high value engineers, I call them as high value engineers, although they're not members of the institution, they've excelled and have risen to the top of some of big agencies. We can have, there's a, there's a route that we try to work out to make it comfortable for them to do that. And in consonance with the membership chairman, we've been able to arrange that. So we want to encourage those of you who go back to your workplaces and they are your colleagues who are so scared that. In fact, when we did the last one in, uh, in Pidwiasi, I was this faculty head in the university, I'll mention the name. And then he came to me and said, Kwabna, if it hadn't been today, I wouldn't have trusted you, you know? I thought that you guys were trying to trip me and fail me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they, they thought, because he's already, uh, you know, ahead of a facility and, you know, if he comes and he fails, you know, he, he thought we were trying to trick him. So I said, no, 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 we won't do that. We are gentlemen. We won't do that. And he was, and when he took his, when he took his uh, certificate, there's somebody who's been lecturing in MIT and other things, the way he shouted and walked around that he can die now, he's happy, you know. So that's how much value people put on the membership of the GHIE. And I think it's all our responsibility to make it attractive, to let people feel that you, all of you are ambassadors of the GHIE. We are ambassadors of the institution and we have to work hard to keep that. 
Of course, the technical divisions, I'm a bit saddened because the electricals are catching up too much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you can see the percentages. Civil is 40%, electrical is 31, uh, chemical, mechanical is 20, chemical is 9. Of course, all the others are assigned. I mean, these are just the four old traditional divisions. There are perhaps about 60 or more disciplines now when you go into the details, petrochemical, um, aeronautics, biomedical, and all of them computer, industrial process, you know, and even under civil, it's now about 15 disciplines, you know, so, but these are the four main that we use as part of our governance structure. And, and the last two inductions, the electricals overtook the civils. And as a civil engineer, I wasn't very happy. Uh, the gender situation. I think it has improved, but we have a lot of work to do. I mean, times in the past, it was less than 0.5%. But now it's risen to 7 And so we need to encourage a lot more women to add up to our numbers. Of course, these are the industrial trends I talked about earlier. Of course, uh, our membership and welfare committee also did some significant things this past year, including sending across a survey for members. I, I'm sure you saw it. Uh, did you take part in the survey? Please get involved in these things and take part in the survey. It's important that we know the remuneration levels of our engineers. You don't need to mention your name or be identified, but we want to have those uh, figures and statistics. And our disappointment was with the Professional Olympics. This was our 50th anniversary. And we were able to enlist the surveyors, all the bankers, the architects, even the lawyers brought a few people. And then at the end of the day, we know what happened. The surveyors won. It was a nice day at, El, uh, at Burma camp, but the numbers were not impressive. And I think we have to be honest with ourselves. If we don't enjoy having a day out of fun, of sports, you know, we did the 50 meters dash, some of us played football. You saw me score a goal on television, didn't you see that? <laughs> I had a nice dink. You know, so, and I think Engineer Hazel was battling with me with, on TV on hand wrestling, but I won. <laughs> and so I think uh, this year there will be another professional Olympics. All the professional bodies, architects, pharmacists, accountants, they will be there. And let's get more involved, Engineer Nelson. Let's get more involved. <laughs> the young men especially. And the women. These are the members of the welfare. Oh, no, sorry. These are the, unfortunately, those we lost this year. Those we lost this year. Engineer Benjamin Taylor, Engineer Dada Kainunu, Engineer Lai Ajedu. I think his funeral is today. Last weekend. Last weekend, yeah. And then Prophet, uh, Pro uh, Professor Robert Chrisiapia and Mr. Samuel Kwekudovlo. Perhaps we should all stand up for a minute of silence for our departed brothers. Let's say our amen. Amen. Please be seated. As part of our public interest or public advisory services, um, we paid courtesy calls to several institutions. Of course, our sector minister, Minister of Works and Housing, the Attorney General's Department, all part of the advocacy for the engineering regulations that we need to be passed in Parliament as soon as practicable. And also, the fact that the Board of the Engineering Council is still not in place is something that we've been pushing with the government. And Ghana Ports Authority, I, uh, we had opportunity to go and meet the uh, CEO, and the Volta River Authority, Cosmos, Talo, and most of them are sponsors of this, this program, Bui Power Authority. And we want to improve that aspect of our, what we do. Some of them have complained that they don't feel the impact of the institution in their workplaces. 
And so we need to be more engaging and set up visitations. And uh, we are trying to put together an itinerary of visits for the incoming president and set targets so that by the end of the year, certain critical organizations should have had interface with the Ghana Institution of Engineering, and especially the technical institutions. I think it's very important, the universities especially, you are the ones who have to inculcate in the young ones that as soon as they enter the university, they become student members of the GHIE. And on that score, I think I want to congratulate Professor Makaduma Soma if he's here. He's, he's not? I saw him this morning. <laughs> he's just left. Oh, okay. Um, I think we should do that. And uh, you see, once you do that, the person comes out of school, the transition becomes very seamless. You know, so you don't have people who come out of school and can continue to practice for 10 years and are still not members of the institution. It's not done by the lawyers, it's not done by the doctors or the dentists or the architects. All of them want to feel to a part of their professional institution as part of their professional development. Of course, I've talked about the BUSAC. Um, we had the first Ghana Infrastructure Conference in collaboration with our colleagues in America, the Ghana Transportation Professionals Forum. It was a very successful engagement at the Holiday Inn. All the engineering related ministers were there. Railway minister was there, aviation, transport, roads and highways, works and housing, and the senior minister was there too. Unfortunately, because of the impromptu cabinet meeting of Wednesday, we missed the approach presence at our opening, but they had undertaken to come. And today, they are coming for the presidential inauguration. The vice president would stand in the stead of the president who's had to travel at short notice. And of course, the Piduase, sorry, the, the Piduase declaration, the conference that I talked about, which was sponsored by MasterCard and uh, we, Earlier on, as I said to you, during the meeting at Holiday Inn, we launched the next round of the Ghana Infrastructure Report Card. And this time we are adding sanitation, education, and health and telecommunication infrastructure to the previous ones. And we hope that um, by 2021, we should be able, 2020, 2020, I think we were worried about elections, so we said we'll do it 2021 you know, so that we don't uh, get drawn into elections un unnecessarily. Of course, we participated in a stakeholder workshop on the election of MM MMDCs. This was the picture, as you can see, the senior minister, Cecilia Dapa, um, Professor Ajo, um, Ajo, Ajo, who was the guest, sp the keynote speaker. I can see Joe Gatte, Honorable Am Amuakwata, Siama, and the rest, and uh, I can see Dr. Boache and myself, and you can also see yourself. <laughs> so, in conclusion, I want to read on behalf of the President Steve Anoff, Amonin Yangsen. Congratulations to all members who have helped uplift the image of GHI in the last council year. This is quote, this year has seen the institution being more visible and vibrant. We are consistently being soft, over, soft after by decision makers for our thoughts and ideas on major issues for the purposes of shaping national policy. And that can only be good. In fact, the senior minister called and said, the report that the GHI sent when the government solicited views of professional bodies concerning the Ghana Beyond Aid our report was by far the best of what they received. And I think we should be proud of that. Thank you very much.
Uh, thank you, uh, Executive Director. Uh, we will now uh, call on the President-elect, who was also in charge of finance, to give us the financial report. Good morning again. I'd like to call on the on the auditors to present the um, the report, the audited report on account. Good morning. Um, all right. Well noted. All right. Um, my name is Charles Robin. I'm the audit partner uh, in charge of your, your account. And my assignment here this morning is just to present the financial statement of the institution as at the year end 2018. Uh, we, I believe you all understand that the financial statement captures the financial performance of the institution as at a particular period. So we are looking at the period end 2018. We are looking at the period in 2018. So we want to look at the performance of the company and then the assets and liabilities of the company, of the institution, sorry, as at the year in 2018. So can we go to page um, 49? Page 49. It summarizes the, the bottom line of the institution, whether the, whether the institution made a deficit or a surplus. The institution is not supposed to make a profit. So anytime the institution makes a bit of gains, we call, we call it in accounting, we call it surplus. So if you look at page 49, um, what I'll be doing would be to just do a comparative analysis of 2017 against 2018 and um, speak to the figures. All right, so if, if, if you go to page 49, Page 49 is the income and expenditure of the institution as at the year in 2018. The first item you see is income. Income for 2017, as we have in the financial statement, was just a little, a little above 3 million in 2017. Whilst in 2018, the income earned by the institution rose to 4.3 million, representing a 39% jump from 2017 to 2018. If, if, you look at the, the, uh, if you look at the total expenditures as well, in 2017, the total expenditure was a little above also 3 million, which, which is about 3.1 million in 2017. Whilst in 2018, the expenditure, total expenditure for the year amounted to 4.2 million. So that representing 35% jump. So whilst the income, am I going too fast? Okay, so while, whilst the income jumped by 39%, the expenditure jumped by 35%. Hence, there would be a bit of surplus. So the entity, sorry, the institution made a surplus for the year in 2018 of 96,000. Whilst in, two, in 2017, the, the institution made a loss or a deficit of 3,000 Ghana cities. So now let's, let's, let's look at what actually contributed to the increase and then the increase in revenue. If you go to page, um, I think, 40, 56, sorry, you would see the breakdown of the income, the, the individual, the, the breakdown of the income. Page 56, the breakdown of the income. All right, so you would see that the first item is annual dues. Annual dues jumped from 1.4 million in 2017 to 1.6 million in 2018. 12% jump from 2017 to 2018. And this is basically as a result of, my understanding is the, there was a bit of increase in membership, member, membership subscription by about 10%. So that impacted in the annual dues as we have there. 
and then so I'm I'm just, I'm just picking the major significant or the, the significant changes from 2017 to 2018. The next major significant change from 2017 to 2018 is what we call the advisory services. The advisory services in, includes your arbitration services, consultancy services, and all that. So we grouped that under advisory services. It jumped from 400, 464,000 in 2017 to 1 million in 2018, which is about 131% jump. This is as a result of a lot of consultancies and advisory services conducted in the year 2018. One major significant transaction that caused the revenue to jump by 39% is also the sponsorship income. You realize that in 2017, you didn't have anything under sponsorship income, but in 2018, you had a sponsorship income of 300,000. And this came about as a result of the 50th anniversary. Uh, a lot of companies donated to the institution. So uh, the total amount that the institution received in that regard was about 300,000. So looking at this major movement, it actually impacted in the change in revenue from 3.1 3 million in 2017 to 4.3 million in 2018. Can we go back to page 49? So, so this explains the movement in the income. Page 49. So under expenditure, we see um, salaries and related cost. Salaries and related cost also jumped by 37% from 474,000 in 2017 to 651,000 in 2018. The movement in quantitative terms is about um, 176,000. So representing 37% jump. And this is as a result of three main things. One is that the institu institution em employed additional staff, one new staff. The second one is that the putting together, the institution had about 15% jump in salaries. So that also contributed to the change in in, in salaries. And then the last one was that um, the outgoing executive director and then the current executive, direct, direct, executive director, uh, I think that the out outgoing left around June or July. So the, the new one was appointed around February. So two salaries were being received at the same time, concurrently. So from February to about June, July thereabout. So all these three factors contributed to the 37% jump in salaries. The next item is uh, general and administrative expenses. General and administrative expenses increased by 50% from 1.5 million in 2017 to 2.3 million in 2018. So if you want to see the breakdown of the general and administrative expenses, if you go to page 59, sorry, 56, you would see the breakdown, the breakdown of the general and administrative expenses. So these are the breakdown of the administrative expenses. Uh, I would want to pick the major movement, traveling, the, what, what, what is so clear is traveling and transport. Traveling and transport increased by 49%. And this is as a result of the increase international travels in 2018. Um, advisory services also increased by about 70%. 70, 70, 70%. Uh, and, that is a, and, and this expense corresponds to the increase in income. Realize that if you go to the income, you would see a significant jump in advisory services. So it also cor correlates to the increase in expenses in relation to advisory services. Okay. So um, this, these two major expenditures, uh, the salaries and related costs and administrative and general expenses led to the 35% jump of total expenditure from 2017, which was 3.1 million. If you go to page 49, to 4.2 million in 2018. 
So what it means is that in page nine, the institution, like I said earlier, made a surplus of 96,000. And this is as a result of the change in income and the change in the, sp in the expenditure. Whilst the income increased by 39%, the expenditure increased by 35%. So can we go to page 50? Page 50 talks about the position of the institution as at the year end, 2018, where the institution is at, at the end of, as at the end of 2018. So the first item we see is property, plant, and equipment. I think that this, um, the, 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 the brochure missed out one page. It gives the breakdown of the property, plant, and equipment. It missed out the page on the trade and other receivables. It missed out the page on investment held to held to maturity investment and trade and other payables breakdown. So I'll just talk to it. The first one is the property plant and equipment. During the year under review, the institute actually made some additions to the property to their property plant and equipment. So the total additions made to the property plant and equipment in 2018 was 332,000. Additions to building, additions to equipment and furniture, and additions to motor vehicle. So the total capital expenditure during the year 2000, that, that, that is the total capital expenditure during the year 2018, which is not in your brochure. So the movement in property, plants, and equipment, which is 214,000 that you see in page 50, is as a result of two things. One is the additions, and then the two is the impact on, of depreciation. So whilst the company made a capital expenditure of about 300,000, we had an impact of depreciation of about uh, 100 and something, 111, 17,000, which negated the jump in the additions made during the year. All right. The next item is current asset. The current asset, asset and in page 50, the current asset, the most significant ones, I will leave out inventory because inventory to, to us is not material. Trade and other receivables. Trade and other receivables, are we all there? Trade and other receivables jump by 67%. I'm now in page 50. Trade and other receivables jump by 67% from 121 in 2018 to 203 in 2000, from 121 in 2017 to 203 in 2018. And uh, the changes in trade and other receivables is largely due to one, some old debt coming from proud periods, which is the most significant item. It has not been written off. Uh, the council still believes that those um, debts are recoverable, so they were not written off. And then some, some bit of receivables during the year, which is um, uh, largely from the seminars made in 2018. So some institution, some companies are yet to pay the institution. So this resulted in a jump. But the most significant item in that, in that trade and other receivables is the old debt that uh, the council still believes is recoverable. The next item is the held to maturity investment. Held to maturity investment jumped by 23%. And held to mat ma the maturity investment is made up of the treasury bills at um, EcoBank and then some fixed deposit with some financial institutions. So the movement in, in, in the account from 482,000 to 590,000 is as a result of the, of the interest end on the health to maturity investment and some additionals in the health to maturity investment. Uh, I would want us to jump to the bottom, the current liabilities. Current liabilities. Current liabilities. So the first item is trade and other payables. Trade and other payables jumped from 175,000 in 2017 to 373,000 in 2018. Trade and other payables re re refers to or relates to 
the institutions that um, the companies that institution owes as a, at the end of the year. So trade payables, the significant item had to do with trade payables. Trade payables jumped, like I said, from 175,000 to 375,000. So this account, as you have before you, were prepared by the council. As auditors, we were supposed to audit the financial statement based on international reporting standard. And that is what we did. We obtained, in auditing, we call it appropriate and sufficient evidence that helped us in coming up with our independent opinion on the financial statement. So if you go to page 46, you would see our opinion on the financial statement that you have before you. So page 46 talks to our opinion on the financial statement. So if you go to the paragraph that talks about our opinion, based on the evidence gathered and based on the work we performed on the, on the institution's financial statement, this is our opinion. So we have, we, we, it is stated that, that in our opinion, the financial statement gives a true and fair view of the financial position of the institution as at the year end 31st December 2018 and the financial performance and cash flow for the year then ended in accordance with the international financial reporting standard for SMEs and in the manner required by the company's act as amended. Thank you. Yeah, earlier on I said that um, your brochure missed out on a particular page that contains uh, note 6, note 7, note 8, note 9, and note 10. Yeah. But then if you look at the original financial statement we sent, which I have a copy here, it has those notes. But I think that when, 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 when they were doing the printing, uh, they, they missed out on those pages. But is there a particular question in regards to that? I can answer. We don't have the details. Have you the heading for the report? Your independent, yeah, report, it's saying for yeah, it's the true. year ended 31st December 2017. Uh, this, Line this the report is 2018. Yes, this, this is a typo error. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. All right. All right. So um, I, I think I think a question is that if you go to page um, fifty, the institution has an overdraft of fifty-eight thousand. Yes, the institution has a standing um, arrangement with EcoBank that as and when they fall short of cash, they can have access to the they, they can have access to cash. So indeed, if you look at the um, health to maturity investment, right. You realize that um, okay, you don't have the breakdown, but I have the breakdown about about um, ninety thousand of that investment 
they, they did a, uh, the institution did an investment with EcoBank. So they've used the 90,000 investment with EcoBank as a collateral to assess funds as and when the institution needs funds. But if you look critically at the financial statement, you realize that in 2019, the institution made a significant additions to the asset. Sorry, in 2018, I'm confused with that in 19. So the, the institution made a significant additions to the asset. So they assess funds through the overdraft to, to make some of these capital, um, capital expenditures that the institution did in 2018. Just to support the auditor, um, of course, that talks about the major rehab of our conference center. We've done some major work, at least internally. We had to paint the whole building. We had to change all the carpets. We had to change all the oil conditioners. We had to build new toilets. If you come up upstairs, we've built new toilets that were not there. We've rehabilitated the others. The president's room, too, has been fully rehabilitated. It's now very private. Times past, the president had to move out and come and come to the public restroom, which I felt was not right. So we've changed the configuration of that. And then apart from that, if you look at our sponsors, a lot of them have not come through with, you know, they're in the process. Sometimes the checks have been released. It goes through bureaucracy. So we have this standing arrangement with EcoBank. And we have investments there, so it is secure. So sometimes when we need that, we go for it. So at the time of this publication, that was the point. But even today, if I go and check, it, it may be different because it goes up and down. Depends on how much comes in, how much clears on a particular day. So you have a, a quite reasonably healthy organization. Um, Engineer John Abujansa, uh, I would like you to uh, give me some clarification. When you look at the income, that's page 56. You realize that was what you call publication income. When you compare with last year, uh, that the previous year, you have 7,398, but the current year you have 1,284. Will you explain why there was that drop, that sharp drop? Right. Right. I, think, I think the, the, the incoming president can explain all this. Unfortunately, this year we have not been able to. Perhaps that refers to when we do publications and people pay for them. But we didn't make any publications this year. In 2018, there, there have been no publications. Which one? But when you go to the expenditure column, you have printing and publications of journals. And you look at the price, the cost there too, very astronomical compared to the previous one. We are, you are saying you didn't do a lot of publications, but you have printing and publication of journals. All right, so I think, I think these, these are two expenses put together. So one is printing, the other is publication. So these are two, two distinct exp expenditures. Okay, pr probably in future. Okay, so well, well noted. In future, we'll break it down. Overflow. Yes, yes, but the statement has been presented. And can somebody move for acceptance? Overflow. No, there is a question here. There is a question from Overflow. There is a question from Overflow. I'm engineer somewhere too. Yeah, okay, Overflow. Yes. Uh, note 5, page 56. There are certain expenditures which, on the absolute figures, they don't look in a scary. But if you look at the percentage increases, they demand some uh, explanation. One that I can pick is the presidential address, which increased by 200%. And the printing and publication, which increased by 283%. Mr. President, on point of order. I think uh, we'll have to move and accept his statement for discussion. Then he goes away and then we discuss the details. That's how it uh, should be done. So can somebody move? Uh, 
Uh, fellow engineers, um, I'd like to move for the acceptance of the audited accounts um, hereby presented. Any second? Okay. Now the floor is open for, for this uh, comment. So, Which one so now can the explanation be given? Overflow, go ahead. Yes. My, <coughs> my question is an explanation to how come the huge increases in presidential address and printing and publication of journals by over 200 percent each you can respond to that yes as i said if you looked at the presidential address this year the booklet have you seen the booklet the booklet the presidential address booklet you haven't seen it i said it was a thesis i told you to be a phd thesis it was a thick book. It's got glossy cover like that. So the cost of printing of that was much higher. But of course, we're also able to generate more income. So you should look at both sides. <laughs> we're also able to generate a lot of income. Um, and then as part of the presidential address, as I said, whether... I'm not an accountant, but whether you call that as capital injection or the rehabilitation, it was because of the presidential address that we decided that, look, this is an institution headquarters. We can't have those loud rooms. And we had to build new restrooms. That wouldn't it, be in that cost. Say it again. I'm saying that wouldn't be in this cost. That has been captured in other areas. Yes. So basically... It's the, it's basically, is that, then, is the printing. The cost of the printing, the cost of the printing yes. And media coverage and other things. That. The cost of... Training. 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 Well... Well, we see that we, um, there wasn't much training done this year. And we're trying to, uh, last year, sorry. Um, we tend to uh, restructure the secretariat. And when the restructuring is done, uh, then we begin to, because then new work assignments uh, will be given to people. And we begin that there will be more training people to keep up with what we demand. Thank you. In fact, council has approved the initial advice of the reorganization and put together a, a team to look at the reorganization of the secretariat, to look at our core mandate, you know, which is to make sure that we have a register of our members who are also going to be continuously professionally trained. And as a result of that, those changes are being made. Different assignments have to be made for the different departments at the, at the headquarters. I have two questions. Uh, page 50. Uh, I don't know the status of the Engineering Council of Ghana. Uh, were we making any expenditure on them? And uh, there is nothing uh, in 2017 and 2018. If we can have some explanation. Well, they... Let me, let me just finish. Uh, and then this issue of the printing and publication of journal, it will still come. The presidential address is a different item, and then the printing and publication of journals is also a different item. But there is no journal 
published. The, the, the second question is on page 56. 56, 50 and 56. 56. Uh, can the questioner clarify no, himself? Understood. Understood. Okay. Oh, I see. I think the the printing refers to uh, documentation when we are going to do uh, membership, and that is when that is printed. Even though there was no publication, we need to be able to print certain items for those the inductees, and that's what accounts for it, and all the reports are there. Okay. Um, Which is the second one? Uh, the council is not in place now. Well, pre previously we um, we sent some money to the engineering council as a law mandate, but um, since the new um, the new council, the change in government, the board has not been put in place. And the council is uh, virtually a one-man thing. We're waiting for the board to be put in place. Then we, we honor our obligations. Thank you. OK. And mine is quite a different thing. I see a significant um, improvement. Pardon? The name, Engineer Pierre Dumens. Page 56, um, Electricity and Water. I see a significant improvement. Um, 2017 was over 100,000, 2018, just 76,000. What accounted for the improvement? Note five. Well, well um, some of the firms that support us, in fact, is uh, a, a member of the institution, Process and Plant Engineering, with Chint. I'm sure you saw them at the, the solar people who you saw at the exhibition, they donated solar equipment. The solar equipment, that is grid tied, which means that when we have sunshine, it, it produces electricity for us. You know? And if our consumption is more than what it is producing, then we fall on the grid. So it's a very flexible system. So that has caused a reduction in our monthly um, electricity bills. Thanks. And of course, the bulbs and other things, yes. And we encourage others to do the same. <laughs> well, of course, we, we change the ACs. <laughs> I think a lot more people want me to say more. <laughs> we changed about half the ACs, which were very old. Now we have more efficient ACs. And we are even talking to the Sunyani University to have the solar powered ACs and as we go along, as we continue to improve the Secretariat. Page 56. Um, item traveling and transport. I think the figure keeps hovering around 30% of the total expenditure for the year, for both year 2017 and year 2018. And uh, I want to know what plans you have uh, as an institution to bring that figure down in subsequent years. Why should they come down? Why should they come down? <laughs> if you are getting this, your income is increasing. I think this is national budget. You know, some is increasing. You are in 50th year, anniversary year. You know, there are more obligations. Come on. Uh, What's it?
it's a, I think it's a, we were obliged to do many more travels in the year 2018. Why is it 30% all the time? I think this is a very good question. And for our expenditure, traveling uh, uh, to take 30% is something that we have to look at. But I have uh, an idea, and I have a dream. <laughs> the dream is that our engineers must be well resourced. We should be able to have a lot of income. And then we should have sponsorship on the traveling of our of our executives and things, you have an, a, a company coming in to sponsor them and all that. So my dream is that when we get, become well resourced, we will sponsor all this and the percentage can be done. <laughs> but going, the, the international travel are a necessity because we have to be internationally relevant. Hello. Well, I think we've said it here before. I mean, it's not for nothing that we got our IPP elected as the president-elect of the Federation of African Engineering Organizations. We have to be internationally relevant. In fact, next week, there's an executive council meeting in Slovenia of the World Federation of Engineering Organizations. And if we are not present at these places, it's a problem. I have had an issue where I think I mean, a whole president of the Federa of Ghana Institution of Engineers, we should not let him travel on economy. It's not fair. It's a different issue. <laughs> no, I think it's, it's not good branding for us. It's not good branding for us. What happens is that when we are traveling, then I'm in trouble. Because we know humility. I've been traveling business class from 20 now I've had to top up all the time, you know, and it's, 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 it's a drain on me, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a serious drain on me, and sometimes I have to dodge and go and hide in the lounge because my boss is not in the lounge. It's not fair. It's not right. This is a big organization. I mean, how can the president of the institution be traveling and component organizations have officials, of not even their CEOs, officials traveling in business class, and the president of the institution is traveling in, uh, in economy. I mean, please, I think that we should do something about these things. And not, let's not try to be, you know, this, this, is, this is a fact. <laughs> you want to say something? For all those who, who agree, you say, I, I. I. <laughs> the eyes have it. The eyes have it. He's not the, he's not the chairman. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, Yes, the eyes have it. However, uh, we're in a democracy. Um, I just want to suggest that any time we do an international travel, when we return, we should kind of summarize it and put it into, we don't have our journals coming out, our newsletters coming out often. So, All right, but strategically, that sentiment where it's looking like this is too much, I think it is important that you push instead of pull communication. It's what we call push communication. The, the, the website, they want to say what we call a pull. So do a push communication, and it will help in this, you know, um, thing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I like to make a, a small comment, and I like to appeal to all of us. This is not a poor institution. You know, 
And this is a great institution. Our image is important. I think what we need to demand results. Okay. We need to demand results. But you know, we can get into a position where we don't spend any money and we don't do anything. <laughs> you know, the reason why we collect the money is because we want to achieve something. And I think we should look at those objectives and say, what are we, what we are achieving? Are they commensurate with what we are spending? And I think uh, the ED pointed to the progress that we have made in the international arena. Right now, go to any of the African countries and they will mention Ghana. For anybody who wants to do anything, they will go the extra length to invite Ghana. They want Ghana to be present. And it did not just happen. It is because of all of these interactions. And what we need to do is to make sure we increase the top line. And I think we can. In fact, if you look at the money that we made from training, it is almost nothing. Why? Why? If we increase that alone, we would not be talking about, you know, the traveling taking 30% of the budget. So I think, let us think big. You know, by all means, let us be, you know, prudent. But let us think big. Let's develop a vision for our institution. If we are going to lead this country, as is my dream, it is going to take resources. You know, and let us not give up. Let's keep pushing and let's challenge ourselves. And in fact, I would hope that some of these travels will be able to get some of the younger engineers, sponsor some of the younger engineers to see what is going on in other places. You know, so rather than cut back, in fact, I would like to see more. Let us be in the position where we effectively, you know, building a succession plan. It is not enough for old folks like me to go to you know, these countries, I would like to see some of our young engineers and then develop a field so that they can help the institution. So please let us dream big because we are going to lead Ghana. At the last council meeting, it was decided and I think uh, we are asking for the authority of the council to put a stamp on it. We think that the practice where the incoming president is having to present budgets and you know, having to take pot shots is not the best practice. And that the decision was that it should be the work of the vice president. And so council decided that and we want to have the approval of the AGM so that from next year, we will not have the incoming president or the president-elect go through that kind of thing. And so I want to put that across. The, the, if you are in, in agreement, I'll put out the motion. It's a constitutional amendment, so, uh, you know. It's not a constitutional amendment. It's not constitutional. The council, the, your council took a decision, and my duty was to inform AGM that the council has taken a decision. I think you have clothed the council with authority to take certain decisions. So that decision was taken by council. We are asking for ratification, yes. Well, Engineer Hesse is on the line. Um, uh, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's not a constitutional issue at all. Uh, the constitution says that somebody should be appointed as an ordinary treasurer. And the person who appoints the ordinary treasurer is the council. If the council chose to appoint the president-elect as uh, the ordinary treasurer, it was the council's opinion. And if going forward, the council thinks that uh, it's a bad practice and want to do something else. It's purely a council uh, decision. There's no need for ratification. You're not changing the constitution. You're not changing the bylaws. Thank you. This is coming from someone who was instrumental in preparing the new constitution. And the bylaws. So we take it that from 
from hence. It's the vice president who would handle this. And on that score, I want to... Yes, yes. yes. That's right. That's right. Okay, let's take it as just information I passed on. <laughs> you don't want to hear. <laughs> accepted. Accepted. I redraw the piece of information. I redraw the piece of information. But in that spirit, I, I want to, on behalf of the president elect, give, present a preamble to the budget. Can you please load it up? Sorry. Um, okay, so I, I have a question here. Um, is it? Yeah. Um, I think we missed one step. After my management report, I should really have moved for the acceptance. And uh, President Robert Ajay will move for the acceptance of the management report that I presented. In the absence of any further comment on the management report, I moved for the approval, acceptance and approval of the management report. Seconded by Engineer Kwabna Bimpo. Oh, past President Hagan, sorry. My past President Hagan. So can we? <laughs> well, we want to move to the finance set. Time is running fast. And uh, I'll just read through the, the preamble on behalf of the president elect who is mandated to do this. In line with the GHI constitution, council is mandated to prepare and submit budget to AGM for approval. The thrust of the budget shall be in the following areas. Improving efficiency of the Secretariat, increasing our membership, welfare of our members, and equipping our members to be more competitive in the market, and maintaining our relevance on the continent and elsewhere. <laughs> well, there are four major areas that we need improving at the Secretariat. The restructuring of the Secretariat, which I spoke to you about, there's a committee already advanced in working on that the welfare of the staff, the logistical support for the staff, and the proposed architectural facelift that I referred to in the earlier documentary. Can you go to the next page? Can you scroll down, please? Of course, we've talked about the increase in membership. That's a drive that we need to carry out to increase our membership and our engagement with individuals and organizations, that's reflected in my management report and the enforcement of the Act of Act 819, the Engineering Council Act. Of course, we've talked about seminars, workshops, and as we said, maintaining our relevance in the international community means that we have to participate in WAFIO programs, FIO programs, the UFEO programs and CEC programs. That wasn't captured, the Commonwealth Engineering Council. And of course, our bilateral 
agreements with ISC, ASC, ASME, IC, and APWA. Well, I think I've talked about the uh, new organizational structure. That is, there's a committee working in that. The council expects an overall increase of 15% for the salary budget and an increase of 6 to 10% of salaries of canal current personnel. I talked about the, the headquarters improvement, which is being carried out in phases. It will be continued. And uh, we talked about pursuing the inten uh, intended allocation by the Ministry of Works and Housing. And I also mentioned, can you go down a bit, the license renewal in arrears, which was close to one million. And these are individual arrears. So individual members, not the corporate one. That alone is one million in the 2018 budget. And it's been difficult, but we are updating, we've sent messages around updating the personal records of uh, our members. And so far we've been able to update some of the records within the last four months. Can we go forward? No, no, come down a bit. Yes, yes. Um, of course, I talked about the solar panels installed by our partners, Plant and Process, in collaboration with their partners, Chint, and that has reduced significantly the cost of energy. Um, we expect a marginal increase in cost of vehicle running in the coming year due to the increase in cost of fuel. Um, however, the Tata, <laughs> I think you should listen to this. However, the Tata bus, which was solely to be used by the ED, is now part of the fleet of cars being used by the general office. Um, in fact, your, your ED <laughs> is supposed to be using the Tata bus. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, in the meantime, I'm, I'm sacrificing by using my own vehicle. So that's my contribution to the organization. I think all of us should make contributions to the organization. Um, <laughs> we are not even fluent in maintaining it, but it's okay. We'll talk about that. <laughs> um, I think I mentioned the collaboration with MESTI regarding the establishment of centers for design and manufacturing. That's what we talked about, the precision centers that we want to put together, and that's why we think we believe we need some more space. Um, we want to continue that collaboration. Please go on. And we've made a little budget allocation for that, because although MasterCard Canada provides, may provide a bulk of the funding, they want to see us also make a commitment. Of course, uh, these are motor running conference facility. We've talked about the, the facelift. It's still ongoing. Um, I think the, we need to do more because the curtains are really old now. So we need to do more with the facility. And of course, we, we said that we will continue to be very active in the international affairs. So that may increase. Now look, our, our brothers from Nigeria brought a, a delegation of 23, 23 to this conference. I'm not saying that we should send 23, but at least. I, I want to encourage a lot more of our members to be attending conferences. It doesn't have to be only AGMs of other countries. There are a lot of conferences. Even you can bring it to our notice. If it is in your field of specialization and you are a member and you want to a conference, by having the, the cover of the GHI, it helps you to have issues, I mean, easier issues with visa acquisition and also registration at least will help you with that. And, and, and also, <laughs> that's very important. One area that we generate a lot of money is arbitration. And in fact, we need to increase our engagement with the arbitration center to train a lot of our elder, our senior people to, to play a role in arbitration. In fact, we have been communicating more with the judicial service because a lot of cases are technical cases, building construction cases in court. Where the lawyers have no clue what is happening and it's dragging on manufacturing issues. And sometimes when they give it to the GHI to set up a DAB, the adjudication boards, 
then we can normally is the GHI that appoints the chair and the two parties who also appoint one each and then we'll go through the arbitration. The courts believe that it's shorter, the resolution is quicker and for us at the GHI it provides us a little bit of cash <laughs> because um, we started with 75-25, that is 75 to the consultant and 25 to the institution but uh, we've changed that and said the institution's goodwill really is the one that is the driving force. In fact, in some organizations, it's 50-50. But to move from 75 to 50 is too much. It may discourage our, our senior colleagues who are doing arbitration. So we've pegged it at 60-40. At 60-40 for the meantime, that's what council has pegged. And so that is also very good. It helps us. And uh, although there are certain companies that are refusing to pay money's owed us. It runs into thousands of dollars and we are pursuing them. Please go on. Of course, they, they, um, this year I think OAK have run their course as our auditors. In fact, we are mandated to replace our auditors as part of good practice I think every six years or every th five years, I'm sorry, five years. I've written to the IS ICAG and we are waiting a response. They are supposed to, I was hoping that they would give us three nominees for me to present to, count, uh, to the AGM. Then you approve one or would, would have recommended one to you for your approval. Unfortunately, I haven't got the response yet. So we we'll request you to clothe your counsel with the authority to appoint as the, we get the responses. So I don't know whether I have to move a motion for that or you have to move. Um, past President Asari Eboa has moved for that, for the AGM to cloth the council with the authority to appoint our new auditor. And Dr. Robert J has seconded. Those who say, yeah, Aye. hey, Aye. past President Robert J has seconded. So the eyes have it. Aye. Thank you very much. I think that should, be, that should be all for the budget. Can we have... The, the, the figure is in the book. Okay, so we can go through the, the details in the book. We are looking at the budget. As I said, the main sources of income are number one, our licenses renewal, subscriptions, that's what we call it. We don't want to call it dues anymore. <laughs> licenses renewal. And I think at the end of it all, there's, when we move to the next session, there's a proposal from council for a little upward adjustment. Not for this year, but for 2020. Not for this year. So I think you can go through the budget now. And if you have any issues, um, we'll be happy to respond. Uh, they are, they are <laughs> I've heard comments that why did we change the fonts and make it so small? Because we don't want you to see it. <laughs> so please go through it. It's on page 58 and 59. And uh, 60 is part of it. Here you come. from page 58. <laughs> 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 
Hello. If you look at the expenditure for 2018 that we have just discussed, repairs and maintenance is put at 95,000. And I was very happy about it because in most cases, until recently, we don't have repairs and maintenance as a budget line on our accounts. But now it is there. And I'm happy because it is not the Ghanaian way of doing things. We normally don't budget for repairs. Or if we do, the money is put into something else. So we are learning something and I want to point out. I will suggest that we, we keep it and we ensure that the center is under good repairs. But if you look at our expenditure, uh, sorry, the budget for next year, it looks like we are reversing the, the trend. The budget is now very 45,000 or something. And I'm not too sure why we are moving from 90 to 45. Repairs and maintenance is put at 40 for 2018, 60, 60. 40,000 for 2018, actual is supposed to be 53, budget is 45. Well, because a lot of the, with a so, significant amount of rehabilitation, yes. I think that immediately in this year, the maintenance of those parts of the facility will not be much. Yes. This maintenance will go really to the ground floor. Yes. And so that's why we think we should hold it at that level. You know, so we have put in new facilities at the top. We expect that that should last us. The maintenance on, on that should be reasonably lower than what we used to have in the, in the last year. I, I understand that. Yeah. But I think there are, if you, go, you take a good look at the center, I think there's still some more yeah. things to be done. No. Our... I think we we'll invite you with your immense experience to come and help in that. In that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, if, if you look at my audit report, there are still a lot to be done in okay. that area. So I think that figure is very low. Okay. I think uh, there's still room for us to... The point is well taken. Um, I believe that you need to <coughs> collect money before you can spend. And I was looking at your income stream uh, on page 58. Oh, that's it. On page 58, and the last item, sponsorship, it's moved from 300,000, which you had last year, to a million. Now, that's a great jump. That is a quantum jump. Uh, are you stepping on something that uh, we don't know? <laughs> or are you smoking something that we don't know? Well, well. <laughs> well, this year already we have been able to attract, as we speak, 440,000. So we still, we are stepping on something. <laughs> President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a quick one. Uh, staff remuneration uh, in 2018, page 60, page 60, uh, the first item on page 60, we... We spent 651,000. Uh, and the YD made us understand that 
there is going to be a 15% increment. And that should bring us up to about 748 or 750. And we are going to 1.1 million. What, what percentage are we looking at? Hello, it's working now. Um, um, I think I will use this opportunity to announce that the director of operations has left office. He resigned and went back to AGC. He used to be at AGC. And so we need to recruit a new director of operations. That's number one. Already, we have, I mean, this is a budget figure anyway, but already there, is, there has been a committee that is working to improve the staff conditions. I think they've almost completed their work. And the restructuring is different from the committee working on the staff remuneration. So that is likely to go up. And then the restructuring, I think that there may be two more lines that we may have to fill, recruit some more staff. Because we want to concentrate a lot on training, so we believe that instead of having a director of operations, they should, the perhaps may be, they haven't finalized their work, but there's a school of thought that there should be a director of member services, you know, and director of training. And so, and then even corporate affairs and IT may have to be split because IT should stand on its own. It should be the backbone of this modern forward looking organization. And I think we have a lot of challenges in our IT area. We have improved a bit. As you can see, people are calling me that they really watched this in on live and it was so clear. In, uh, that was fantastic, eh? <laughs> then give me a hand of clap, you know. <laughs> Overflow. Well, well, so, affect that.